budget for FY21 for the town of Weathersfield? Um, I don't know. Is it different that it's the meeting or is it a still a special meeting? Right? Yes, it's still a special meeting. No, it's not correct. Uh, do we need to, um, to attend stores? I'm sorry? Do we need to do attendance for special meetings? We, we can, but they're all here. So I can take it like that. I saw everybody. So everybody's, everybody's present. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Um, you know, I, first time, you know, this side of the equation uh, for uh, doing a budget. Um, I don't know if Gary, you wanted to say anything first, um, have any questions, uh, have comments at the end, uh, however you want to do it. Uh, it's, you know, it's your prerogative if you wanted to kind of um, lay the, the groundwork on. Um, I, I can I can kick off. Uh, thank you to the mayor and town council uh, for uh, for many of you. This is your first budget cycle. Um, this is probably this is my second my first full budget cycle. My second budget cycle with the town of Weathersfield, um, with a issue with COVID, made this a more challenging budget than uh, the town has probably seen the most recent. Uh, past, and I can say for myself and my professional career dealing uh, with issues in other municipalities, it, it absolutely was a very stressful time um, because there are so many unknowns with what's going forward in the next year. Um, I think, you know, the, the residents uh, are on edge, and I thank the council members for their patience. Um, and as we went through the different iterations, this was certainly not an easy conversation that had to be had. And I think you should all be congratulated for the professional level in which everything was handled um, both on, uh, from across both sides of the aisle, but also in dealing with staff here. Um, I'd like to thank my staff for their patience with me, uh, especially Mike O'Neill. I'm saying with a smile as I was constantly running up and down stairs saying, what about this? What about that? Um, and trying to figure out uh, how best to achieve a budget that provided us a, um, uh, you know, a fair and reasonable uh, value to the residents without impacting or in, uh, reducing the amount of impact of services that may, uh, may be needed by many residents. So it was definitely a very difficult and challenging time added to the fact that we're doing it through Zoom it's usually a lot easier when you can have in-person meetings, when you can uh, sit across the table from someone and present reasonable arguments from both sides. And so I think, again, just to reiterate as a council uh, that had never really worked together before because there are so many new faces here, I think you guys should be congratulated with how much you were able to get done in such a short period of time. Um, and again, I just wanna thank the staff who uh, I know a lot of them are very concerned from every level uh, within the organization because every year you just don't know what's going to happen from one year to the next. And I thank them for their professionalism, for their continued commitment to the residents of the town of Weathersfield, and also uh, to their commitment in helping me uh, give you guys the best possible service that, that can be there. So thank you for that. I would, would mention that I think, I don't know if we traditionally do a pledge for budget votes, but that is something if, if we want to do, we can. So just throwing that out. Dan O'Connor, welcome to the council. You want to lead us on the Pledge of Allegiance? Uh, after you throw that out, Gary, it's very hard to say <laughs> no to that. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> Hold on, let me bring up a flag. Uh, that might have to work. All right, I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to, to the, the flag. flag. United States, the United States of America, of America. and to, to the, the republic, republic for which, which we stand, stand. One, nation. one nation, under God, God. individual, with liberty and justice, justice for all. Thank you, Councilman O'Connor, and thank you, uh, Gary, for, uh, for yes, um, 
reminding us that on a uh, special meeting like this, we should um, honor the uh, the flag of the United States, especially right now, given the circumstances that um, are going on, uh, not only worldwide, but uh, you know, in uh, Minneapolis right now um, as well. We are one nation. We really are truly one nation um, together in, in all this. So thank you for that. Um, you know, I, I'm not going to, I'll leave any kind of speeches for us, uh, but I will kind of piggyback on to what uh, Gary had said. You know, when we first started doing these Zoom meetings towards the end of March, you know, we figured we would be doing them for a little while, uh, not knowing that we would have to go, you know, uh, practically every single meeting, including workshops, um, conferences with uh, both Mike O'Neill and town staff during, uh, you know, budget um, department head budget workshops, as well as, you know, just simply conversations with staff. Um, it is tricky to do it, you know. I said this, I think, in the beginning, um, that when we were all in the uh, town manager's conference room doing the uh, budget deliberations, you could literally pass, you know, it's not like class, but you could pass notes to one another on um, both sides of the aisle, like, hey, you know, I'm looking at $800,000, you're looking at 950, can we, you know, cut it in half? You know, we, that's how we, you know, were able to do some of the, uh, uh, negotiations back there in the uh, in the budget deliberations. A little bit different doing it virtually now, but uh, I can probably tell you if I didn't have an unlimited phone uh, account, I've gone through data, I've gone through minutes, I've gone through it all, um, talking both sides of the aisle um, and with town staff to be able to come to this point right now. Uh, it's, I feel comfortable where we are. Uh, you know, I feel comfortable where we are as a town and um, uh, I do want to echo the appreciation that Gary had said to town staff, especially Mike O'Neill on this, um, his staff in the finance department, every department had every single staffer that, um, you know, puts uh, uh, their hard work into serving the town of Weathersfield. Uh, my appreciation to everybody. Uh, also, the nine or eight of you guys as well. Thank you for, uh, um, for all your hard work. Uh, a lot of great ideas uh, that has come from everybody. Uh, different thinking, you know, coming from this side of the aisle that had been in the minority at least my six years prior to being mayor. You know, it, there is a lot of hard work that goes into this, Mary. I commend you. Um, I saw former mayor Donna Hemmond last night. I commended her, and I've always given um, you know my uh, sincere appreciation to to all the former mayors that I see because it is. It is a challenge uh, um, for those who have this, this seat um, to be able to, you know, not be a cheerleader for one side or the other, but to be a um, kind of a, a matchmaker or bridge maker. I'm hopeful that uh, the dialogue and the debate that we have surrounding tonight's budget, it'll come across um, that, uh, that we all together to be able to get to this uh, position. So, um, with that, without that, you know, I, I know we have a couple um, motions to be made. Uh, Gary, should we just go right into the motion, or does Mike have anything he wants to say at all? I guess I would just point out. Um, I kind of lose track of where what we've all last looked at, but there's a couple of couple of changes here for people to be aware of. I guess the one is is just the um, the reduction of the road fund by one hundred thousand dollars, and that was uh, that was used moved, if you will, to the general fund to reduce to increase uh, well <laughs> to reduce the reduction, which would increase uh, I guess the parks and rec budget related to pools. So 100,000 was moved from the road fund to Parks and Rec. Um, and I'm sure someone, I'm sure that there will be members of the council that may want to address that. But I just wanted to, in terms of mechanics, point that out. Mike, was there also, uh, I think there was a change in the mill rate from the last time we spoke on Wednesday. Uh, is that also yes. accurate? Could you uh, explain the change in the mill rate and what the 
how I believe that the money was taken from the fund balance. So I'd like to know how much and the changes that were made. So the total um, adjustment to the appropriation of fund balance on the revenue budget is one point six million five thousand dollars. The total appropriate that's in addition to the four hundred that was in the proposed budget. So the total use of fund balance in this budget is two million five thousand um, dollars. I was looking for the change from our conversation on Wednesday. The the change is a reduction in the mill rate to 40.69 combined road fund and general fund, which is 0 0.05 mills less than uh, the current mill rate. Um, I'll leave it and at what that. Is that equal, what does that equal? And we're, we're doing that by taking dollars out of the fund balance though, in order to get to that mill rate. Is that correct? That's correct. And how much money was needed to make that particular adjustment from where we were on Wednesday? I'm sorry, ask again. How much money was needed in order to make that adjustment from where we were on Wednesday? From the fund balance, if, if that helps you, but I think you know what. what I do. Yeah, I just gotta look it up. I'm just hesitating to get it right. Let's get it right, it's okay. $100,000 additional use of fund balance. And um, is the change to the lease to for us to be able to buy the truck in the new, uh, in this new uh, adoption papers, adoption motions? That has no effect. Uh, the truck was already eliminated in, in scenarios and discussions prior to this. And as the practice is uh, with lease transactions is that the first payment is always in the next fiscal year. So it has no impact on the, the budget in question. Because the lease payments, so it's, it's the intention uh, that you understand from this council that the truck be purchased in the next fiscal year to handle the needs. And there was a simultaneous reduction in maintenance costs for the lights then that were, that were changed or will be changed or won't be changed. There was no change. No change. So the no lease payment, the go ahead, Mike. There was no change to the maintenance costs that are in the physical services budget. Is it the intention of the town manager that he's going to use those funds in order to pay for the lease or it's not? The, the lease payment carries into next year. So no matter, even if you purchased it tomorrow, the payments wouldn't be realized until the next year's budget. But we wouldn't have the cost of the maintenance anymore. So we left them in there. It was 35,000, wasn't it, Mike, for the light maintenance? Yep. So even if we get the truck, we're still going to have to do repairs, right. pay for poles and all that sort of stuff. So we left that in there. Is it the intention of the council oh, in this budget to uh, be able to secure that apparatus, make the deals with the other towns, and then in the future get rid of our payments for maintenance? Maybe Mayor Mike, you know, we talked about this, of course, so I'm looking to you for some guidance here as well as town staff. You're on mute, Mayor. There was a little bit of interference that was coming. I don't know if it was coming from my iPad or, or what, but I, I did hear some interference that come in. Matt, can you repeat that, please? Sure. We, I said we obviously talked uh, fairly extensively about being able to get this into the budget. The, to be able mm -hmm. to purchase the truck and then in order to be able to lose on all the out years, the maintenance costs. So right. I guess I'm looking for confirmation from you and from the, the paid leadership, town manager, town staff, yep. that that's going to be able to happen and that is included in our intentions in this budget. 
Yes. And I'm not necessarily uh, hearing that is, there's been any adjustments made. So now we're sort of no, backtracking. We're sort of discussing that we have an agreement that that is how it's going to work out since there was no technical budget adjustments made. Right. We do have, you have uh, an agreement that I said to you and that, that you guys had uh, discussed on Wednesday for the um, purchase of the um, bucket truck for the lights. And uh, um, originally the idea has always, well, the idea since, you know, I've been on the council and since Mike has been finance director is we've been trying to hold off on lease payments and buying outright. So I think we want to, I think the gov or the town manager's original proposed budget was to purchase outright the $110,000 uh, bucket truck. Um, but it is our intention uh, with this budget to uh, lease the bucket truck for um, light repairs uh, at a 2.5%, I believe, um, interest rate. So uh, it's a minimal impact on the budget. And uh, if your numbers, Matt, um, coincide with the numbers that uh, Mike O'Neill has for savings, we, uh, we should be able to recoup uh, those savings uh, within the five-year period of the lease. So yes, uh, it is my intention to um, lease the, uh, the bucket truck. And Gary, that's your understanding as well, and is cap and is capable to do if with with these numbers as adopted, if adopted. Yes. Yeah, so, um, I, the quick answer is yes. My, I, you know, I'll follow the the request from leadership and from the council in order to come up with the scenario. You know, as long as we can meet the objective that is that is put in front of us in terms of the return on investment um, and the requirements, then. You know, I, I think that the numbers should speak for themselves once I gather all the information together and bring it to council. If you recall, typically when we do these uh, programs, there's a, there's an, as part of the budget process, I will come back to council for uh, an appropriation or the actual allocation of those funds um, for the, you know, if it's $110,000, that'll be the number. And I will provide the council with a breakdown of the the ROI, return on investment related to the purchase. Um, in the meantime, it, it makes fiscal sense to keep that $35,000 line item open and available. One way or another, we'll have to use it. Um, if we don't acquire the truck early on, we're, we're going to have to have a consultant use those funds to make sure they're addressing, um, addressing any issues. And if we do have the truck um, early enough on, then we can use those funds as part of addressing any issues that come up. So. My understanding, again, is that um, as long as I compile the information that's uh, related to showing the ROI, which I believe we should be able to get, um, we just want the time to be able to put it together so that we can provide it to you to make a, an appropriate decision. Understood. Thank you for the information. Yep. Mike, uh, while we're running through talking about the budget truck, would you like to go through the three items that Amy, Matt, and Kevin proposed that we could just run through those? Yes, hang on one second. Let me just grab one more piece of paper. Are those listed as part of the? They're not in the budget per no. se, but I wanted to uh, address them and acknowledge yep. that we're going to yep. go three requests. So. Yes, um, I'll, I'll be happy to do that. And, uh, and I do appreciate the, the hard work of everybody on the council. Um, when we had the deliberations on Wednesday, uh, the final deliberations prior to tonight's vote, um, it was the first time that uh, not only myself, but you know, all eight of you uh, had gotten to see the um, line by line that we were looking to increase or decrease throughout the um, Town manager's uh, budget or proposed budget that he had come with. Um, some debate or lively uh, debate on a number of items. And uh, obviously, one we just touched on was the um, bucket truck for physical services to replace and repair 
uh, light fixtures, LED light bulbs and light fixtures throughout the town. Uh, don't quote me on the number, but I think we have 2,308 lights now that we own and we purchased from Eversource somewhere around that number, 2,300 or so. 28. And, excuse me. 28? 2803. 2803, sorry, I inverted the numbers. Uh, 2800 uh, lights and um, there is a cost, despite the fact that they're LED and only about a year and a half old, there is a cost to uh, not only maintain those lights, there's also a cost to replace light uh, poles that um, not only get broken due to accidents, storms, high winds and whatnot, um, but also to um, rot and um, lack of uh, maintenance over the last 40 plus years by um, you know, Eversource and, and prior to that CLMP. Uh, so we do now own 2,800 light fixtures and uh, poles and whatnot. So with that, the, uh, um, the debate surrounded the need to continue to pay for outside contractors uh, to, uh, to maintain those and um, replace the lights. We uh, went and I asked uh, the question of uh, council uh, that if um, you guys have those recommendations or at least that one recommendation for that point to uh, come back with me to me um, on our side with uh, some some ideas that you did for the bucket truck. Um, similar to that was the request that Pine of uh, that um, Mill Woods be open for uh, the summer. Something we had discussed at length, and, and I know from Parks and Rec have been discussing it with the health district and others about the safety of opening pools. Uh, unfortunately, I don't believe we can open Willard Pool um, just because of the close confines and the inability to uh, socially distance that. Um, but one of the requests was that at least with Mill Woods, if it can be open, that the, the town please open uh, Mill Woods. Uh, talking with folks from Parks and Rec, uh, insurance uh, on liability, uh, as well as uh, others uh, on the possible opening of pools in phase two of the governor's reopening of Connecticut. It may be possible to reopen uh, public pools. And uh, it was our um, idea that uh, if we were gonna do that, we would have to do it um, in the recommended format that Kathy Bagley and Gary uh, Evans had discussed, possible staggered times, um, closing for a certain period to allow staff to clean properly, um, opening back up again, closing uh, throughout the day to be able to ensure the safety and cleanliness of the, um, of the facility. Um, I do have confidence in our staff that they would be able to do that. So um, after Wednesday's conversation, we um, you know, reached out to you guys to say, you know, if, if these are some of your priorities, please um, work with us across the aisle to um, realize some, some savings. And, uh, and you guys did, we, you know, at least from my perspective, I, I really appreciate that. That shows a, uh, a collaboration and, and a way for uh, us to work together to, uh, to give back to the town that, uh, that we represent. Um, we all have our own um, ways to, uh, to get to where we wanted to be. And, uh, and you were happy, or we're happy enough to see that you guys had proposed certain, certain ways to get to, uh, to what you wanted. Uh, finally, uh, and this is what I had to grab off my printer, uh, we did create a, um, a committee. Uh, I believe it's similar to the committee that the Board of Ed has uh, an ad hoc um, education uh, committee, almost like a foundation. Um, so we are going to create this uh, ad hoc committee to determine, um, I have the actual language, Gary, if you haven't emailed it out to the entire council, um, you can take a look at it. Uh, but it will be um, looking at alternatives to um, 
the property tax. Uh, you know, this is something having worked up at the state capitol for a number of years, I've seen different commissions. Um, probably the most, most recent was the Moore Commission, um, but there have been governors from, um, I believe, uh, I don't know about Governor Rowland um, forming that commission or a commission to look at um, those uh, different ways to, to get uh, you know, funding from municipalities, but I can say that Governor Rell, Governor Malloy, and Governor Lamont are all looking at, or had looked at, and Lamont currently looking at ways to have municipalities not rely so heavily on the property tax. Um, that is their only, really their only source of income with the exception of uh, some, as well as obviously state revenues that come in and any federal revenues that come in. Um, but we are looking at a way to um, create a different revenue stream for our um, way of taxation that's not solely uh, reliant on property tax. Uh, there will be three members, uh, one from the majority party, one from the minority party, uh, a chair, and um, they will work with the town manager or his designee um, in the next uh, year, so that next year at this time we can come up with a, uh, a budget that does not rely so heavily on property taxes from our residents. And those are the three items that I, I think you guys had sent over, and when I say you guys, I mean um, uh, Kevin, Amy, and uh, Matt had sent over um, with the caveat that we wanted to keep the mill rate at, uh, at a certain level or less. And um, as we start to deliberate tonight on the budget, uh, we will see uh, that we were able to uh, um, accomplish what you had asked for as well as what uh, we had intended when we first met um, on our side to deliberate the budget. Thank you. Any other questions at all on that? If we want to go, I'm, I'm trying to get everybody. I'm on, let's see, I don't know. I can see Amy, Tyler, Dan. Can we, make, can we make a motion to vote? Well, we got to make, um, there will be, uh, Tom, do you want to make motions tonight? We'll through, I believe, 10 motions. Um, I don't know if all council members in front of them. Dan, I know you're new. I don't know if you have received it from Gary to his account. I don't know if he set up a, um, a town email account for uh, Dan O'Connor yet. You're on mute. Yeah, I, I don't have it, but I'll listen in when you say it. So you didn't get the email? If you want to... Uh, no. Hang on one second. I can send it to you right now. I just received it. Okay, I'll send it right over to you. So uh, while I do that, um, why don't we um, hang on one second. Gary, can you send that to Dan? I'm just as I'm looking at this. I've got a 4041. The 451. Is it the 451? Yeah. I got 49. If yeah. you can, if you want to send me, if you want to, Mayor, if you want to zip me a quick, you know, something with his email, an alternate email other than the town one, I can forward I this to him. Man, I think this is it. Final forward budget motions and worksheets. Uh, from 4.49 tonight, 11 minutes prior. Yep, Dan, it should be coming across to your account. Okay. We'll have to, we'll have to figure out why those aren't getting to you. Councillor O'Connor, I apologize. I don't know why they're going through. I do have a, I'll have a tablet for you shortly. Um, maybe that'll solve the problem. So I'll go ahead and start. Okay. Yep, I, I, I have it, so we're good. Thank you. Number one, that the budget as submitted by the town manager on April 27, 2020, be and hereby is amended as follows. Decrease in the amount of 10,150 to account 110 town council. 
increase in the amount of 4,329, account 120, town manager. Decrease amount 20,157 to account 150, town clerk. Decrease amount 700, account 230, tax assessor. Decrease amount 1,800, account 300, planning and development. Decrease in the amount of 12,400, account 420, police. Decrease the amount of $10,000, account 400, 430, townwide radio. Decrease the amount of 8,629, account 510, engineering. Decrease amount 182,486, account 520, fiscal services. Decrease in the amount of 152,142, account 800, parks and recreation. Decrease in the amount of 181,500, account 950, transfers, CIP slash CNEF. Increase in the amount of $100,000, account 960, reserved for retirees. Decrease in the amount of $100,000, account 410-54437, street construction. Motion's been made. Can I get a second? Second. Uh, Dolores, you got that, Tom, and then uh, Tyler. Mayor, may I ask a quick question? Sure. Um, remind me what the 181-500 reduction is in transfers to CIP CNEF. Mike O'Neill, maybe, or, or Gary? <clears throat> Mike? Yep, bear with me. Yep, we're going to bring it up. Actually, if you are, I'll work from the package. Um, the last page of the package. The last page of what, of this one here? Of the, the motions one? that went out, okay. yeah. It's lines 28 through 30. Those are lim elimination of uh, three items, three vehicles from the... Uh, CNEF, Capital Non-Recurring Expenditure Fund Budget, Jeep with a plow, uh, bucket truck for street light repairs, and uh, the van, transit van for uh, Board of Ed uh, tradesperson. Um, and the intention is also not to purchase um, police cruisers this year, is that correct? Or are we purchasing them through a lease? Uh, no decisions made the intention. Uh, in, con in conjunction with the budget. Those were not included as uh, straight purchases, you know, a straight appropriation for purpose per purchase in the town manager's budget was not included, was eliminated. So Mayor, is the intention not to purchase the four police vehicles this year? It is, yeah, to coincide with what had been proposed by the town manager not to purchase those four vehicles. Including through a lease payment plan? Correct. Okay. Yep. Thank you. I'm gonna, I, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll vote for this motion, but um, I, I, do, I do have a little concern with, um, I shouldn't say a little, I do have a concern with um, delaying some of the replacement vehicle purchases, but I, I will support this, this motion. Okay. Anybody else with any questions on these? I, Just a comment, Mayor, but the question should go first. Um, I have a comment as well. I don't have a question, but uh, if anybody has any questions, if not comments, Councilor Forrest. Thanks, Mayor. Um, 
this has to do with, I think, just the general budget process. And I'm just going to make one comment for the 10 motions that we have here so we're not bogged down in comments consistently at, at each one, at each item, because they all sort of speak to the same thing, which, of course, is how are we going to uh, fund our town over the next year at an, at an appropriate rate with the considerations of our current situation in our society. So I want to thank uh, all the people that are I'm looking at right now that I've worked with in person and on the phone um, significantly over the past three weeks. I think that I struggle with this particular budget and this particular situation the way probably everybody does. Um, we are taking significant hits in our financial stability while we recognize that people's personal situations are equally as financially unstable. And whether we don't have necessarily a perfect rate of unemployment, we could sort of banter between whether it's 21% or 25% or 18%. The reality is I think that we may be looking at whether it's one in five or one in four or one in six, that that number is a difficult number. And that difficulty uh, is going to belie itself both in the more well-to-do in our town and also the less well-to-do. And our taxation affects them all. So when, we, when we're faced with this particular situation, we've also, as a member of the minority party, sought out the majority and their efforts uh, in order to alleviate some of the grave concerns about some of the things that we, or at least I, hold dear education being one of them, capital being able to keep up with our ongoing costs such as roads and so forth. And then also an idea that I have had for a while that have been bantered around sort of in minority, meaning there haven't been enough votes necessarily to get it off the ground. And that is how do we change the structure of our tax base? Not necessarily because there's going to be uh, less taxation because there's a reality whether Democrat or Republican that things cost money and they're not for free. Um, but is there a way to augment through an endowment model uh, and perhaps funding it through alternate sources that our operating income can actually be paid from a large sum of money that is taken out of the political process? Not unlike most major universities do pay for large sections of their operating cost through endowments. And since universities are entities into themselves uh, that they don't end. Yale University is not intending and in closing their doors in 100 years or 200 years or 500 years, nor is the town of Wethersfield. And because of that, I think that number 10 on this list, which is the creation of the culmination of ideas from Republicans and Democrats working together, that perhaps we can start something here in Wethersfield that the state of Connecticut has not been able to. And perhaps through bipartisanship and true working together and trusting each other as neighbors, as members of the society that come from different places and different philosophies, but recognize that if we can find alternate sources other than the, the, the uh, imaginary money tree to really have success here. And these are not gonna be short-term solutions. I know Mayor, you may have mentioned, we're gonna create this committee to sort of solve some of our problems in the next budget. And that is, that, that is not gonna happen. <laughs> but we're talking, uh, what happens in 20 years from now, and 40 years from now, and 60 years from now? The Yale Endowment was not created in three years. But over time, if, if long after I'm dead and everyone I'm looking at probably is not on this earth, um, 100 years from now, if we can create an endowment that pays for half or three quarters of our operating costs, can you imagine the advantage this town would have over other towns that didn't take the bold step of taking some ideas and trying to see if they would work out? So when we're governed with that concept, uh, this can be a starting point, uh, the ability for the majority party and the minority party to work together on some of the smaller assets. You know, Councillor Hill was interested in pools and I'm happy to support him in that venture in order to even out any, any of the disparities between the people that could swim in Pine Acres that maybe had a little bit more disposable income or the people that needed to go to the public pool and learn how to swim there. That's extremely important and that we're able to provide an outsource during the times where we're all cooped up and provide that maybe not only for the town of Wethersfield, but for other towns that have decided to close their pools and be maybe a little less bold. Uh, and I'm sure that we'll open them as the mayor said with, uh, in the appropriate way. And I do believe that as well. So with that, 
we're stuck with can we keep the mill rate stable during a time where one in four, one in five, one in six, whatever that number is, it's it's a scary number. It's much, much greater than we ever saw in 2009. Uh, and I was here doing, and I was during, I had those budgets. Um, and yet be able to keep our services pretty much intact, shakier, no doubt, but intact. And uh, early on in this process, I talked to the mayor and I told him, I said, if you go into education too deep, it's gonna be a problem. Um, and we had serious conversations and I have assurances from the mayor oh, in the last 24 hours that continued. He said, I would never vote for this budget if you're gonna start cutting teachers or staff members that were critical to my kids going to school. And I know other people I see around this diocese, uh, their kids go to school. Because class sizes of 27, 28, 29, 30 are just are unacceptable in this town. Probably should be unacceptable in other towns too. But it's certainly, that would be a, a game stopper for any type of collaboration. But that didn't happen. And there was collaboration. And the cuts here seem to be able to be, and I have assurances that they will be, uh, not a loss in services and teachers uh, and also all the sub the sub services that assist the children maybe not in the direct classroom but you know ancillary to that uh, so so that was a commitment that was made by me and matched by the majority fantastic uh, and then the other commitments to other some of the other needs and because of that and because of the town uh, situation of our of the employment level keeping the mill rate at the same level is is appropriate um, and i'm going to be voting for this budget uh, it seems to be right for the conscience uh, that i have uh, it is not a budget that i necessarily would have put forward but i'm also not in the majority um, and uh, and i have to be able to respect the voters of this town if if my democracy big d and i'm a democrat i have to believe in democracy small d and the democracy uh, said that the people were looking for a change. It's a 6-3 council, and I need to be able to respect the, what the people wanted in that vote. And I think that this uh, particular budget is going to be a culmination of those desires um, against uh, some type of uh, compromise with the minority party. So it may be see as a bad word in politics these days, you know, the word compromise, but I, I'm willing to do it if I think it can better out some of the interests uh, that are important to this town. And thank you for listening to the, I'm sure you're all thinking very long-winded speech, but I'm not gonna talk again. I'm gonna be supporting the 10 elements of this particular budget for those reasons. Thank you, Councillor Forrest. I appreciate that. Um, now I know why I've gone over minutes on my phone, having talked to you over the last 24 hours. I appreciate those comments. Um, uh, one thing I, I just wanted to mention is that in the town manager, you'll see that uh, um, account number 120 is actually an increase of $4,329. That comes from the emergency management uh, funds that were originally in engineering. So, um, you know, we are not uh, um, boosting up his, uh, his uh, budget for any other reason than um, right now because of uh, obviously what's going on. On with emergency management, we need all the, the resources we possibly can. So with that, uh, motion's been made and seconded on item one. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Aye. I believe nobody. Nobody, so we have nine yes. Nine yes on uh, item number one, Dolores. Thank you. Thank you. Um, can I get a motion for item number two, please? That the budget as submitted by the town manager on April 27, 2020, be and hereby is amended as follows to decrease the total appropriations for school purposes by $810,778. Second. Oh, motion by Mazzarella, second by Flanagan. Uh, motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Mayor, would you just tell us what the percentage increase to the Board of Ed budget is with that $800,000 decrease, please? I am trying to, I don't know, Mike, if you have that handy. If not, I can, I'm looking at their proposed budget for this year was, or uh, do you want it from the adopted uh, Councillor Bellow, do you want it from adopted budget fiscal year 20 
So the um, the the budget as uh, presented to us by the Board of Education showed a 3.5% increase, I believe. And I wanted to know what this 800,000, um, is that bringing it down to a 3% increase? I had heard, I had heard that, but I haven't had an official answer if that's um, now a 3% budget increase. I believe it's 300,000 or uh, 312,500, but we'll wait for Mike O'Neill to confirm that. So that would be 3%. Uh, you want the um, increase over, over the current year, correct? Yes, please. I've got it as a 2% increase over last year's budget. Yeah, the but if Mike O'Neill can figure that, uh, the, their proposed budget was 57,713,537, and, and we have it at 56,902,759. Um, their, their budget was a 3.5% increase, and we uh, took a half a percent off. Okay, thank you, Deputy Mayor. We'll still wait for Mike yep. O'Neill. Yeah, um, my numbers, are, I'm disagreeing with you, so I just want to double check. To I was going to sure. say, I trust you, Tom. <laughs> because about 500000 um is carried right. over to next year. So if you consider that's not technical, I mean, it's 500000 yeah. less, but they're able to carry it over. So it's really only more like a three hundred. And some odd thousand reduction, right. which would be about three percent. That's my understanding. But if you look at the whole eight hundred thousand, not counting that five hundred is carrying over, then it's more like two. Is that right? That's that is what I'm thinking. It's a two. This shows that the overall number of fifty six million nine hundred two seven fifty nine is actually only two percent increase over last year's fifty five million seven fifty nine. But a uh, councilwoman. Peltier is correct in that there is a $511,000 savings that will be carried over from this year to next year with an additional, I believe, $274,000 in federal, what's called CARES Act money due to the uh, COVID uh, pandemic. So we tried our best not to go too far of a decrease in their increase. So it's not a decrease. It's a it's a uh, decrease in the increase of only about uh, a half a percent. So at the end of the day, it's about a 3% increase when you take into consideration the CARES funding and the 500,000 that they have this year. That Where is that going? Is that going into the retiree fund or how, how are you, what's the pass through on that, Mike O'Neill? So let me just say a couple things. I, um, I guess I'll, I'll let uh, the counselors characterize it however they choose. As far as the budget increase to that line from fiscal 20 to fiscal 21 is 2.05%. Um, there are apparently savings in fiscal 20 of about $511,000. Um, the understanding that uh, I, I understand that the council has with the Board of Education is that uh, they would use some of that leftover fiscal 20 appropriation to make an additional contribution to the medical self-insurance fund, which would then offset against what their contribution should be for fiscal 21, thereby reducing it. So I'll put that in layman's terms, they're gonna prepay their fiscal 21 medical contribution uh, to the, I, I believe, $511,000. Yes. Um, so it'll make the medical fund whole, and then they would, uh, for purposes of the next year, 
the budget increase for medical for the Board of Ed would include that 511. That would that would be the, um, you know, you would add that to their 20 fiscal 21 contribution as a basis for calculating what their fiscal 22 is. Gotcha. Thanks for that explanation. Um, Mayor, in your conversations with the board chair, these cuts will not, um, will not impact staffing levels. Is that right? That is, yes, Councilwoman Bello, that is correct. Um, as Councilor uh, Forrest had said earlier, um, despite some of the uh, rumors that were out there, uh, of a 0% increase for the um, board of ed budget and for the town budget. Um, there's no 0% increase in this budget and there are no layoffs. Uh, and like uh, um, for, uh, Councilor Forrest said, uh, and I started off with this, sorry, I apologize, uh, that we do not want to lay off one single teacher or with Great. these. Um, budget numbers. Great, I appreciate that. Thank you. Anybody else with questions or comments on item number two? Okay, motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. Uh, motion carries nine nothing, uh, nine zero. Uh, Dolores. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, item number three. This is for the uh, the total budget for the Board of Ed. Can I get a motion? <clears throat> that the total appropriations for school purposes be set at $56,902,759 for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2020. Motion has been made. Can I get a second? Second. Second, uh, I think it is again, Dolores Mazzarella yes. and Flanagan. Yeah. Thank you. Um, anybody with any questions on the uh, appropriations for the Board of Ed? Kind of discussed it last go around. It is a, this looks like a 2% increase over last year's 55 million, 749, 759, 339. Uh, but it is in fact closer to a 3% increase when you consider all the other factors. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. Thank you. Nine zero, of course. Thank you. Like I, I was happy to discuss the, um, the ability to not lay everybody, anybody off. That's a, I think that's a good move for the town. Yeah, thank you. And, and I started to say that, then I got off on a tangent. But no, I appreciate that, Councilor Forrest. Um, item number four, this is now for the town side, uh, town manager budget, submitted by the town manager for the town side. Um, can I get a motion for item number four, please? That the town council adopt the town budget as submitted by the town manager on April 27th, 2020, and as amended by the town council in the sum of $51,827,217 for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2020. Motion has been made and seconded. Um, discussion? Just have to toggle pages. Everybody's good. Okay. Um, motion has been made and seconded. All those in favor of item number four, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Everybody's on mute. Um, but it's nine nothing, Dolores, or nine zero, yes. sorry, Dolores. Thank you. That's right. Thank you. Uh, item number five. This is the. Um, capital fund for uh, non-recurring road fund uh, set. Uh, can I get a motion for item number five? That the total appropriations for the capital and non-recurring road fund be set at um, 1,700,000 for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2020. Can I get a second? Second. 
uh, Mazzarella and Flanagan again, Dolores? Yes, I have that. Okay. It was me, Mike. Oh, sorry, Pentalo. I can't. It see. Oh, it was Pat. Okay, thank you. These young kids, they all sound the same. Okay. Um, any questions or uh, dialogue or conversation on uh, item number five? Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Uh, all those in favor of item number five, say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. Thank you, nine zero. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it's for um, the library, and uh, you know, before I go, you know, for a vote, um, I would like to compliment uh, not only Brooke Berry but the entire library board for uh, for the work that they are doing um, for their budget. Uh, it is separate than any other department uh, because they do have a library board. They've worked very hard over the years um, to to be within, you know a good number for um, increases with both salary and operating expense. Um, they, uh, the library staff and uh, the library board have always done a good job with that. And uh, again, this year. Um, so could I get a motion for number six, please? That the total appropriations for library purposes be set at 2,061,421.00. $61,421 for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2020. Second. Motion's been made and second. Is that Pat again? Any? Uh, Actually, it was Dan, the older guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's relative. <laughs> I was going to say, I think, I, I think you're actually young. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the former and probably having served the longest ago member of the uh, Council of O'Connor seconded that one. Um, any Thank comments you. about the library budget? Okay. Hey, can Thank I just, um, Mayor, may I just echo your comments that um, Brooke Berry and the library board really do a great job um, providing services for all members of our community and I, I thank them for their work and I know that Brooke is very fiscally responsible and she's brought in another um, you know appropriate budget and I'm happy to support it. That's great. Yes, definitely. Thank you. I see a bunch of counselors nodding. Yes, done a great job. Uh, motion has been made and seconded for item number six. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. Nine zero. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, continuing on with motions. Uh, motion number seven. This is for the uh, purchase or raising of taxes for both um, school and library as well as capital non-recurring road fund purposes. Um, I get a motion. That the total amount to be raised by taxes for the town, library, school, and capital and non-recurring road fund purposes combined be set at $92,573,385 for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2020. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Councilwoman Bella. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, I'm sorry, now I hear my dogs barking in the background. I apologize. Um, I'm happy to support the Board of Ed, the library, and the road budgets this year, but um, I can't in good conscience support the, the, this um, motion. Um, I, I think that it's an admirable goal to come in with a budget at a zero um, mill rate increase or even less. Um, and I, I am sensitive to our taxpayers and Uh oh, did I freeze or did Councilwoman? And, and um, 
I'm, I'm concerned that we're using the $2 million in the, um, in the, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. Was, Cause I just got a message. It says your internet is unstable. That was bizarre. Um, so it, that's all. My big concern is that um, we're using the 2 million out of the fund balance. I, you know, we know that we're going to, going to receive some state and federal funding in this current, in this, in this budget um, year that we're discussing now, but we don't know what it's going to look like the following year. Um, and that following year, we'll be bringing back services and programs that were re removed from this budget uh, due, to, due to COVID-19. Um, we're gonna have a, we may have a backlog of, of vehicles that need to be purchased, uh, especially the police cruisers. And, and that balanced with the possible reduction in, in outside funding, um, I, I don't feel comfortable voting yes on motions seven and eight. And I wanted to make sure I gave you my reasoning for that um, because I do appreciate you reaching out to us and asking for our suggestions um, in conversations I've had with you going on over the last few weeks. I've indicated that I was concerned with using the you know 1.6 million in fund balance or 1.7 million in fund balance. And so um, at, at this level, I just, uh, I'm concerned and, and we'll vote nay on these two motions. Anybody else? Councillor Hill. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I wanted to uh, first echo everyone's comments, especially to you, Mayor, um, regarding your openness in this process. Uh, it's my first time on the council here, so I kind of didn't know what to expect. And, you know, throughout this entire budget process, you've you know, we're, we're, we're there are only three people here, but speaking for myself, you have always uh, embraced any ideas and I've always picked up every phone call and you know, the proof is in the pudding about what you've added here that we have asked for and, and I can't really thank you enough. Um, so I appreciate your leadership there. Um, but regarding Councilor Moran Bellows comments, uh, I do agree with her. Um, the, you know, there's two items particularly um, they have to really mostly to do with risk. Um, and I know, Mayor, you, you, you agree there's, um, and I'm sure all of you do, that we do not know what next year is going to look like. Um, you know, we know this year's bad. I think we can all safely say that next year will, will be worse. Um, and, and there's two items that I just kind of wanted to briefly point out. Is one that we talked about earlier is the, is the collection rate. Um, and I know um, it's, you know, we're adjusting the collection rate here to a point where you know we're comfortable historically, um, but right now we're making budget we're making a budgetary assumption that more people will pay their taxes this year than they did last year. You know, last year the unemployment rate was three point six percent, and it's now closer to twenty. So making that assumption, I, I can't I just can't reconcile it. I know we talked about how this would cover even you know the worst of times like the 2008 recession, but you know, even historically, you look back, the unemployment rate in Connecticut then was only 5.7%. So it's been unprecedented times. And I, I don't think we have the luxury of adjusting that rate um, now. Um, I know, it, you know we're able to kind of grab some savings there, but budgetarily, I, I just can't wrap my arms around it. And again, to echo the comments about the fund balance, um, I do think it is appropriate uh, to dip into the fund balance. I mean, if this is not a rainy day, I don't know what a rainy day looks like, um, but it leaves us no wiggle room for next year. Um, I know we'll have some savings that will carry over from this year to next, but again, with the collection rate being adjusted, will that erode? Uh, we don't know what, who is going to be paying their taxes. I mean, we'll, the car tax is going to be due soon uh, in the summer, so I guess we'll have an idea of that. Uh, so I will not be able to support it, but I do want to thank all of your hard work and your openness to the inclusion of uh, the, the minority uh, initiatives that we proposed. Thank you, Councillor Hill. I'm just trying to look back at my notes. Um, Mike, do you have uh, the proposed collection, most recent proposed collection rate that uh, we determined or come up with? So let me give you the history. Actually, uh, the rate that's being assumed with this budget that's under consideration is lower than the current year, uh, but higher than the lower several years prior to that. 
the, the rate that was used several years prior to that. So last year, we increased the assumed collection rate from 98.65% to 99.1%. 99.1% is what we're using in the 20 budget. This budget that's under consideration assumes 98.95. So just the history, uh, over, the history from 19 to 20 to 20. So it is a decrease. Decrease gotcha. over 20. Okay, in the town manager. I didn't understand that, Mayor. So, Mike, so what we're so, saying, can I just ask a question? What we're saying is we're actually lower than we were in last year's budget with what we assumed for budget. Yes. Okay. Yes, that is correct. And taking into consideration the economic situation, um, the town manager had proposed a 98.65% collection and this is on um, tax collection, property tax collection, uh, which would have been a decrease from last year's adopted collection rate of 99.1. And we determined uh, that a 98.95% collection rate, which is still a decrease over last year's due to the economic situation that we're in, uh, is sufficient. But um, um, to Councilman Hill's point, yes, it is. We did go up uh, a third of about 0.3, three tenths of a point from town managers proposed, but it is a decrease in what was adopted last year. Um, any other comments on item number seven? Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Uh, could I Who was get the second? Uh, a vote on, uh, that was uh, Councilman O'Connor. Okay. All those in favor of item number seven, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Nay. Uh, eight. Is two, Amy the seven only one? Two. No, Councilman Hill. So that's seven two? Seven two, yes. Thank you. Thank you guys, thank you Dolores. Yeah. Uh, item, item number eight, uh, setting the mill rate. Could <clears throat> I get a motion please? That the general fund tax rate on all taxable property be set at 40.21 mills for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2020. Motion's been made, and can I second? Second. Uh, Mazzarella and Pentelo on that one. Any discussion on mill rate? Okay, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Nay. Uh, so it's seven eight. to two, Dolores. Uh, eight to one or seven to two? Seven to two. I nay for Hill. Two, yes. Nay for Morin Bellow. Same vote. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Uh, item number nine, uh, mill rate for the uh, roads. Could I get a motion? <clears throat> that the capital and non-recurring road fund tax rate on all taxable property be set at 0.48 mills for the fiscal year beginning July 1, 2020. Motion's been made. And can I give a second? Second. Second. O'Connor? Yep. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Item number nine. Okay. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Motion carries nine zero. Thank, Thank you. you. And finally, um, this is the uh, uh, committee. Uh, may I have a motion on number 10? that the town council create an ad hoc committee to determine the feasibility of alternate revenue solutions 
including an endowment model for the town to augment the current taxation structure that relies too heavily on property tax. This committee shall have three members, one counselor from each political party and the town manager or his or her designee. Okay, I got a second. 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 Motions by uh, Mazzarella, second by Forrest. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. I have it, 9-0. Thank you. Those Thank you. are the 10 motions for this. Appreciate it. Um, any uh, final comments? I know we've uh, seen everybody in their living rooms and their homes. Uh, hopefully we'll see everybody at some point in back to town hall soon. Um, any comments about the budget uh, or anything on how we got here? Nope. Well, good. Um, I'm not going to say much. I, I said a lot earlier, and uh, you know, I want to echo a lot of uh, the comments that have been made by um, other counselors uh, up on the uh, uh, screen tonight. That I appreciate. This is my first year as a mayor, and um, I liked. Uh, you know, <laughs> the beginning of the, the the term was was great. We were able to get together at town hall. Uh, unfortunately, because of um, circumstances beyond our control that hopefully God willing will be under our control at some point soon that we will be back at town hall to meet and do this uh, in person. Um, the conversations that I've had not only amongst uh, my party members but um, uh, those uh, from the minority has been uh, I believe very fruitful in our discussions. I do want to echo what um, Councilwoman Morin Bell and Councilor Hill had said um, you know, it is raining this year, but um, we don't know what type of a monsoon we will have next year. Um, rainy day funds are for, for that purpose uh, to get us through uh, for right now. And um, we are, we are use, utilizing those funds. Um, we did not dip in as uh, heavily as uh, um, some people had mentioned to me, even off council, um, to say, you know, you should really be using that rainy day fund because this is a pandemic right now. Um, I agree of doing that, we have others. So uh, I think we're at a level right now that uh, I'm comfortable being at. Uh, as well as the board ed budget, um, you know, this is it's a one-time opportunity, but, um, you know, I appreciate the board of ed being um, on board with uh, uh, carry forwards or, um, you know, utilizing some savings for this year to be able to offset uh, spending next year. And um, I think, uh, you know, we are in a good position right now uh, to have a budget adopted or soon to be adopted um, final budget to the Weathersfield residents that uh, um, holds true to the message that uh, I think a lot of us had heard from while we were out uh, last fall. And that is uh, to keep spending in check, keep taxes in check, and uh, if at all possible, uh, lower. Um, I thank those uh, on the uh, the council um, and uh, both Mike and Gary Evans to work with uh, for working with us to get to a point where we do in fact lower taxes uh, on uh, on Weatherfield's residents. This is a difficult period, and, and Councilor Forrest, you are correct. Whether it's one in six, one in five, one in four, um, and this will be a difficult time. Uh, there will be some savings uh, in this year's tax bill for people uh, on their motor vehicle and on their um, residential property taxes. And uh, for that, I am I'm happy that we were able to get to that point. I appreciate the efforts of everybody who put in to, uh, to decreasing taxes for, uh, for the residents tonight. Any other comments or questions at all? Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Town Manager, any comments at all? Sorry, on mute. Uh, no, I uh, I think I I appreciate what you what you said. Um, I think my opening comments kind of conceptualize my feelings and my thoughts, and I, I thank everyone uh, from from my all levels of staff um, and the, and as well as the council for their patience and. 
Um, I look forward to implementing the budget and we'll do the best that we can to uh, ensure that during, as COVID continues and as things slow, that we bring the economy back online uh, in an appropriate manner and maybe try to hopefully ease the burden for next year. Appreciate that. That's, that's definitely a uh, direction we want to go and uh, God willing we get there. So I appreciate it. Could uh, I get a motion to adjourn the special meeting for May 29th? So moved. Mo uh, motion's been made and moved by Morin Bello. Second? Second. Second by Pentelo. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. I have it. Thank you all. We appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good Monday night. night. Take care. Have a nice weekend, everybody. Good night. Yes, and uh, Dan.